Hello everyone, Ken here. Today I'm talking about the five stages of data science adoption that all organizations go through. To this point, I've worked at many different companies that were all at different stages of this process. If you're a data scientist or an aspiring data scientist, this is relevant because the stage that your company is at can really impact the type of work that you do. If you're a manager or someone that's in charge of data strategy or organization, this video will help you understand how to go from one level to the next. The first stage of this process starts with data collection. Organizations understand that data could be useful to them at some point, so they begin to collect actual information and store it somewhere. Now, I would expect if you're watching this video, your organization is quite far beyond this step, but it is important to know where you start to understand where you'll eventually end up. Even if you're an established organization, sometimes it makes sense to go back and evaluate how you went about uh, maturing through this step. Are you actually collecting the data that is important? Are you actually collecting all the things that could really help your analysts or your data scientists improve the quality of their work? The second stage of this process is data aggregation. You're taking all of this information that you collected and you're organizing it and storing it into either a database or some other type of data structure. You know that you need to make this data useful to someone at some point in time, and this is a necessary prerequisite for that to happen. To get to this step, you'll likely need a database architect and potentially some database engineers to start putting the data that you have into a meaningful and useful infrastructure. The third stage is the production of analytic insight. This is when people actually start using this data to help inform decision making within your company. This usually comes in the form of trend analysis or using pivot tables to look at how different groups perform across the same metrics. At this point, analytic insight is actually informing decision making, but individual models or data science tools are not telling business users what they should actually do. To get to the analytic insight phase, you generally would need to hire data analysts or potentially a data scientist, and you also have to begin to get buy-in from your organization. If people aren't comfortable making decisions based on you know, quantitative insights, this whole thing will not work and you'll probably be stuck in the data aggregation phase in general. The fourth stage of this process is what I deem advanced analytics. This is where models are making decisions with human oversight. So you're able to actually you know, know what to do based on what a model is saying and humans are validating that that is correct. An example of this would be if you owned a store, for example, and you were trying to determine the correct number of new products to actually order each month. You could, you know, you could have a data scientist build a model and that model might tell you exactly how many things to purchase a human would check off on that and actually put in the order. In order to break into the advanced insights phase from the analytic insight phase, you generally would need one or more data scientists. You also need, again, buy-in from your organization. If people at the top are not comfortable making decisions based on a model and validating them with human oversight, then you'll likely be stuck at the analytic insight phase of this process. The final stage of this data science adoption process is what I deem analytic integration. This is where models are making decisions, usually in real time, with very little to no human oversight. This doesn't mean that humans are not monitoring these processes, but if you're looking at an online store, for example, that's doing thousands of transactions and has you know, thousands of these transactions hitting a model in real time, there's no way a person can validate every single one of these. P the, these people are, are evaluating how the models are doing over time rather than on an individual case-by-case -case basis. In this step, data science models are being put into production and they're being run automatically by the various processes that your, your infrastructure can support. To get to this step, you can leverage your current data scientists, especially if they have some of a software engineering background, or you can hire machine learning engineers or software engineers to help productionize a lot of the models that you're using. I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but again, in this step, it's really important to get buy-in from your organization. This, uh, in particular step, is probably the largest hurdle relating to that. When a model is going on its own and there is, and you're not able to evaluate every single transaction in real time, that can be very scary for some people. Uh, and it, there can be risks associated with that. 
a company really has to be comfortable with their infrastructure, with their data scientists, with everyone on the team to be able to get to this point. There's definitely some gray area between these different stages and you could very well be in between a couple of these. Um, I don't think it's necessarily bad to be further back on this progression, especially if you're a newer company and you're trying to uh, push your organization further down this road. It is important to evaluate every step and to make sure that you are not overlooking anything and rushing too fast. You can't do any good analysis without a good data infrastructure because bad data, you know, going into a, a, any model is going to have a bad output. There's this concept of garbage in, garbage out, and you really want to make sure that you do your due diligence and you avoid um, problems like that. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.